Hi, good morning. Welcome to a new video. So today's video is about the Chemink uh, Horridum Aquarel Super Granulation Colors. Um, so this color here is Volcano Red. Um, and together with Volcano Yellow, they are the two almost interesting pigments or paints um, in the new series of colors. If, as you have seen in the previous video that I have on Haze Colors, that um, for the uh, for currently, um, as in 2022, Chemink uh, has made these super granulation colors available in 15 mil tubes together and also um, as half pens so you could get all the colors existing colors in these two forms um, except the haze colors so i got myself the 15 mil tube because i think it's a fairly useful color so like let's go and see why why that's the case um, so volcano red is um, made from a single pigment um, PR108. So we all know PR108. PR108 is actually cadmium red. Um, and as we know, cadmium red comes in a few shades. So we will actually examine this a bit later. Um, this color is semi-transparent. It has excellent light fastness. So it has five stars in the rating. Um, as for staining, it is semi-staining. Semi and it's of course granulating. Um, so uh, when we look at the swatch, over here, um, normally for a swatch, uh, which I have on the right left side, uh, the color will be swatched from a more concentrated uh, solution to a less, a more diluted uh, color. So you could see, um, I try very hard to get a very dark color, but this is as dark as I can get. Um, so, and, and when you compare the two lines, this is the line before uh, the swatch and this is after the swatch. So you could see the difference is that it kind of covers a part of the lines, the cut of the darkened line, so um, showing it's a semi transparency. It's more exemplified when we consider the pigment in water and water in pigment test, where all these are uh, pigment. You can see the big particles just just coming down, and then and you add water to it, it dilutes and it pushes out the light lighter particles. So you, this is just crazy granulating. There's no separation whatsoever because this is a single pigment color. Okay. Um, and this is the same, you, you, you just know like they, we have a black back flow and then yeah, the pigments just push out to at the corner at the side where you put the water. So let's do the um, staining test over here, the scrub. So I'm just try, try, I will try to scrub off. So it says here uh, semi staining, right? Yeah, so I think this is as much as I can scrub off without destroying the paper. Um, you could see the, pa the paint coming off, right? Um, yeah, but that's pretty much it. Um, you, you can't restore that, that paper color. So another thing that I normally don't do, which I'll do here, is actually just try to glaze it to see if it kind of like makes it a little bit more opaque if I put another layer on top. Um, doesn't, I think, this is as much as opaque I can, as I can get it, okay? So why is this important later on? I'll kind of discuss this part. And in a gradient test, you could actually see these particles just kind of dropping off, like uh, following the gravity um, as the water flows down with the gravity. So, right, let's look at, um, there are many similar colors because it's a single pigment and we know this is a cadmium red pigment. Um, so I have sourced out a few brands of cadmium red and also the different shades. Um, I do find three brands um, that are using the actual PR108 because not many brands, I would say, some brands kind of avoid, try to avoid having cadmium pigments. So for example, Mission Go, Daniel Smith, you wouldn't find a cadmium red pigment, but I can find it in Hobain, Shemink, and Graham. Um, and they come in three shades. So they normally come in a, um, like a deep shade, a middle shade, and a light shade. So they are all PR108. So don't ask me how they managed to get three different colors with one pigment. It has to do with chemistry, heating, stuff like that, which I can't explain. Uh, hopefully in the future I'll be able to, but for now I can't. Okay, so um, the red shade is kind of like the orange uh, le needing, leaning ones. Um, you can see that it's a little bit more orangey. So of course this color doesn't seem to be the light, red light. And for the deep, uh, I mean for the middle shade, uh, I would say it's a little bit closer to the middle shade probably. Uh, middle shade is called, of course middle red. And then we do have the, the red, purple, red deep. So in Shemink and, and, and M. Graham, it is called the red deep. 
um, in, in Hobain it's called red purple so it's like a little bit more purple leaning color um, I would say like the volcano red is kind of between the, the, the purple and the deep because it's not as um, maroon <laughs> I think Shamink red deep is pretty uh, pretty brownish um, these two are very quite brown um, but I think it kind of falls probably here in between these two so if you like to have something a little bit darker, a bit like more dull, you can actually go for Volcano Red. So it's a single pigment, um, it's cadmium red of course, and it's a, it's a quite a dull brownish red colour. So I think you could probably use it in um, probably rust and mountains, sand, um, maybe in flowers, um, but it's a little bit too granulating, maybe as like a, something like a glaze over. Uh, but probably not on its own um, and when we look at the uh, mixtures um, it will not doesn't do a lot of thing uh, when you when you look at the uh, the, the, the warmer colors um, it does make quite nice orange colors so in the volcano series of colors there's actually an orange and a brown um, so they these would be what you call like the these would probably be the mixtures that you get like it's kind of be the, the volcano uh, orange and the volcano browns um, and then when you go down the spectrum and when you get to the like the bluer shades and a greener shade you see a dramatic um, kind of mixture uh, because they are kind of like on the opposite ends and the colors will neutralize and you get this beautiful grayish uh, purple color um, I, I, I'm especially like excited about uh, the mixture with, with um, ultramarine blue, cerulean blue, uh, cobalt teal. So my cobalt teal is actually sleeping beauty turquoise. Don't ask me why I'm using that <laughs> because I don't have a turquoise. So I'm using the sleeping beauty turquoise. Mm. Okay, and a phthalo green. So these colors together give you this mixture. Um, and I think I especially love them, um, so I actually swatched them here. So these would be, I say, beautiful mixtures that are kind of super granulating. Um, so let's go and look at how I used it in, in, a, in a sketch of a shop front in Singapore. Um, Volcano Red here gives you a beautiful granulation. On its own, it's just crazy. Um, and we, when we look at the sketch, um, if you are into ink and wash and you're into fine details with pen, and you have a lot of like drawing lines. Um, this is probably not a good color to use because it kind of covers like it. You know, you are kind of drawn to this painting because of the granulation, and you kind of kind of miss out or it kind of covers the lines, so you can't really see very well. But I really love that granulation and the texture that it imparts to to the the paint the the drawing. You see all these texture that you get like over here. So for for this painting, uh, what I did was to use um, the uh, blue, like ultramarine blue, and mix it with ultramarine blue to give this beautiful, like gentle purple color, um, same as the interior. Um, and I think I mixed with the phthalo green, so to give you this, um, the interior and, and, and that granulation just, just kind of come out and that super granulating effect. So it, you can glaze over, you can also mix it, and whatever it does is it just gives you that granulation. So if you, if you hate granulation, like why are you here? But <laughs> if you hate granulation, then don't use this color. Um, use it sparingly if you, if you have very delicate, uh, delicate drawing, a lot of pen, pen lines that are very fine. Try to be just strategic and use it at, at certain portion because it's going to cover a lot of your details. Yeah, but on its own, I think it's just beautiful, the usage of it. If you're concerned with it, with your painting looking patchy because of the granulation, your painting can look quite patchy, especially, yeah, <laughs> because, you know, depending on how much water you add and how you, how you brush, how you do the painting, it's going to look kind of patchy. So that, that's something that you kind of need to think about if you are um, not into this kind of style. So um, I would say that these, this color, if you look at it, it doesn't, um, it doesn't give you a very uniform color. It doesn't give you a very strong, like a, it doesn't give you matte look at all. So even if you um, uh, try to layer it on, uh, it does not give you a uniform wash. So I don't think it's useful as a single pigment. Uh, if you want a, like a, a, a homogeneous color, you can't, this is not a color for you. But if you like to make, put it in a mixture, 
definitely give you nice beautiful mixtures um, and also maybe, maybe as a glaze uh, to, to get, add some texture to, to the painting so if, you are, if you are concerned about safety and you do not want to use cadmium then no, then don't get it because this has cadmium in it so in summary, I would say that I really really love this colour um, if you can, if you are able to afford it please go and get this one because of the possibilities it offers you to make your own super granulating colour so I, I really love that mixture uh, that you can get with the volcano red the, with the blues granulating blues and some of the green colors that I actually did a mixture on my own and you could see for the uh, mixture of um, the phthalo green um, uh, which is a, which is a non granulating color you get to see that backwash and when, as you, when you drop water to it and you could you you couldn't push out you know the the, the volcano red so you, you get to see this kind of texture and that volcano red just kind of like you know, kind of like just drop and precipitates and just sit deposit on, on certain parts of the paper, making it looking looking really beautiful. And, and for the other two, I actually mix it with, with another two granulating colors. For this one, I use the Rillian Blue, and for this, I use Slipping Beauty Turquoise Switch. Um, a kind of a, like a, a the bluish uh, greenish tones, and you could see those beautiful granul these granulation. Like I think they really would look really nice. Let's say on shirts, um, like rusty. Uh, machine parts or cars so this is something that you can consider However, try try with the colors that you have you'll be kind of you'll be surprised what kind of colors you could get uh, you know from from mixing uh, this beautiful uh, granulating single pigment red color so I hope you've enjoyed today's video um, if you did give me a thumbs up and uh, yeah subscribe if you'd like to see uh, more videos on the super granulating paints and on watercolor paints um, so i do hope that you have a great week ahead i'll see you in the next video bye bye